Microremediation is a form of bioremediation, the process of using fungi to return an environment, usually soil, contaminated by pollutants to a less contaminated state. The term microremediation was coined by Paul Stamets and refers specifically to the use of fungal mycelia in bioremediation. One of the primary roles of fungi in the ecosystem is decomposition, which is performed by the mycelium. The mycelium secretes extracellular enzymes and acids that break down the lignin and cellulose, the two main building blocks of plant fiber. These are organic compounds composed of long chains of carbon and hydrogen structurally similar to many organic pollutants. The key to microremediation is determining the right fungal species to target a specific pollutant. What would a mushroom car say? Shroom, shroom. <laughs> Fungi have existed on the earth for more than 1.3 billion years. They have existed longer than plants have. The reason for this is that the mycelium, which is the vegetative part of the fungus, breaks apart rocks which eventually become soil. The soil gives rise to a place where plants can now grow. Fungi also survived during the last glacial period known as the Ice Age. Fungi do not need sunlight in order to survive, they can obtain energy from radiation. Since fungi lived through the Ice Age, they also helped to recreate life on earth. Microremediation was first attempted in Bellingham in 1998, when a team of researchers in Sequim, Washington, treated plots in a contaminated truck maintenance yard. Of the four plots, one received mushroom spores, two received bacterial treatment, and one was left as a control. After four weeks, the plots not treated with spores remained unchanged, but the spore-rich plot had sprouted a large crop of oyster mushrooms. Over the next five weeks, the mushrooms matured, reproduced, and then died. Their life cycle attracts insects, birds, and other animals, and life flourished on the once dead plot. Shroom shroom! Mycorestoration was also used to filter contaminated water after Hurricane Katrina's rampage through the Gulf Coast states in 2005. Research is currently being done in order to investigate whether fungi are capable of cleaning an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So, why did the fungi leave the party? There wasn't mushroom. Microremediation has many benefits. It requires minimal effort, maintenance, and money to start bioremediation using fungi. Fungal spores are relatively cheap to purchase and will reproduce without subsequent application. Treatment, therefore, does not require multiple applications, further reducing the cost. Maintenance is minimal as well once the site is treated with fungi. Microremediation can be more effective than other techniques in certain situations. Other types of remediation require specific environmental conditions to be effective, but microremediation can be more versatile because fungi can grow in a wide range of environmental conditions. Furthermore, the result of microremediation is sometimes of a higher quality than other techniques. Other benefits include public acceptance. No chemicals are added to the system and local species are often used. Safety is another benefit as microremediation does not require removing the contaminants and disposing of it elsewhere and does not produce secondary waste that needs additional remediation. There is also no infrastructure required or machinery. Microremediation is very flexible. Fungal treatment can be applied in most habitats and seasons. Lastly, microremediation acts quickly. Improvements can be seen within weeks to months, whereas it can take between one and three years for certain phytoremediation and bacterial remediation to occur. What do mushrooms eat when they sit around the campfire? Um, Spores. <laughs> <laughs> A few of the common applications that microremediation can be used for are to treat industrial wastewaters, fungal treatment of distillery and brewery wastes, remediation of pesticide contamination by degradation in soils, bioabsorption of heavy metals, dioxins and hydrocarbon neutralization. Shaggy mane are used for arsenic, cadmium, and mercury. Elm oysters are used for dioxins and wood preservatives. Phoenix oysters are used for TNT, cadmium, mercury, and copper. Did you hear the joke about the fungus? No. I could tell it to you, but it might need time to grow on you. The future of microremediation is unknown, but as we can see, its potential is boundless. The mushroom mycelium represents rebirth, rejuvenation, regeneration.
Fungi generate soil that gives life. The task that we face today is to understand the language of nature.